As one colleague once said, we need to think like grown-ups about what objectivity means in particular senses, in particular contexts. When somebody claims this knowledge is absolutely objective and that is absolutely not, I think we need to press them on what they mean. I think it's crucial to be uh, self-conscious about and to critically scrutinize ideals of objectivity as they figure in uh, debate about the value of doing collaborative practice. And they, they do figure, I, I would say, uh, quite dominantly in this context. Um, because conventional views about objectivity fail to recognize the situated nature of all knowledge claims and research programs. That is not to suggest that they all have feet of clay, they're all equally uncertain or unstable, but rather to suggest that different um, traditions of inquiry, different kinds of knowers and knowledge producing communities have different strengths, different capacities. I think we should be very careful about sliding from a claim that an individual or a community is objective to the claim that their knowledge claims or that is unobjective to the claim that their knowledge claim should not be trusted. There are lots of examples where, say, feminist or uh, indigenous knowledge holders are presumed not to be objective as in, in some individual or collective sense, and yet their knowledge claims may have more virtue in the epistemic virtue sense, right? maybe empirically more accurate, maybe more internally consistent, maybe better tested, maybe more applicable in contexts where we need the guidance of that knowledge, than knowledge claims coming out of the institutions or communities that are conventionally taken to be objective. Uh, I've been interested in the arguments of standpoint theorists who make the claim that rather than try to, you know, in, a, in an impossible way, extract yourself from, all con you know, from the context in which you're asking the questions that interest you, rather than do that, rather than aspire to the view from nowhere, it's better, as Sandra Harding put it once, uh, to try to draw together views from as many different wares, as many different contexts as possible, draw on those different resources, and see how they calibrate one another, how they complement one another, how they put you in a position to understand better the strengths and limitations of, of, of one another. That's where I see the uh, that's where I see the relevance to the Indigenous Science Project. It is centrally a project about understanding how really different, in some respects really different, in other respects overlapping, traditions of inquiry and understanding uh, can inform one another more productively uh, than this blanket view from nowhere ideal of objectivity would ever allow. What the historians of science have identified, Dastin and Gallison, uh, about objectivity is that it's flip-flopped as a concept in its history. And one of the key contrasts is between what they call a truth-to-nature uh, conception of objectivity, it's 17th, 18th century, um, and mechanical objectivity of the late 19th century, uh, a perspectival objectivity of the late 19th century. And the contrast is that the natural historians, that tradition, uh, several centuries earlier, depended on these highly trained um, sensibilities of, of these uh, researchers and illustrators to capture the essence of a specimen. So if they were drawing a specimen, uh, plant specimens, say, they didn't aim at getting all the details of that particular specimen, but of capturing its underlying essence as an example of a kind, a natural kind. Um, fast forward several centuries, the concern is to eliminate as much as possible that uh, individual reliance on that kind of individual talent and sensibility so that any observer operating the right kind of recording 
uh, observational equipment would would produce the same image, right? That was the key key shift. It almost inverts the conception of objectivity over those several centuries. Fast forward again another century, we're awash in uh, mechanically produced, so to speak, data of all kinds, massive data sets, all kinds of recording capacities, all of which depends on expertise again. You're not eliminating the observer in the judgments that have to be made to capture an image that's usable, that's informative for scientific purposes. So just in that very short compass, you get these major shifts in what counts as credible observation uh, and what's going to count as a basis for making claims that are uh, taken to be objective. Uh, what I've seen in uh, archaeological context, for example, is a lot of contention about reliance on indigenous knowledge or taking indigenous knowledge seriously, uh, or a lot of contention around feminist or critical race uh, research um, projects in archaeology. They're taken to be not objective because the um, the knowers, the people engaged in doing that inquiry, are explicit about what their political commitments are. Uh, you use the F word and you're automatically situated. You're presumed to be biased. Uh, and something similar, which I think can only be described as racist, happens with indigenous knowledge. It's presumed to be situated in a way that um, Western scientific knowledge is presumed not to be situated, not to come out of a tradition, not to be uh, beholden to um, practices and, and norms that are, in some sense, a matter of convention. The problem with debates where a uh, body of knowledge is dismissed or knowers are dismissed because they're presumed not to be objective is that uh, you then don't go and examine actually what has been learned, what the epistemic virtues are of the kinds of knowledge that, say, feminist or critical race uh, uh, researchers have developed, or that indigenous knowledge traditions have have developed over over millennia, uh, hard won um, knowledge claims that are carefully curated within the community that are updated and and revised and refined in in light of uh, of practice and empirical input. Uh, so. I think it's really crucial to re-examine, to disarticulate these different conceptions of objectivity and ask the question, what actually do we mean when we say that a, a knower is objective or that a body of knowledge is, I would say, uh, knowledge we should trust for particular purposes.